Welcome to another 5-Minute Friday. My name is Barb Carey and I have some great tips for you this week on vertical jigging. Wisconsin winter just disappeared. All of a sudden it's spring. We're already out in the rivers fishing. One of the most common ways and most fun way to fish is to vertical jig. A lot of times the inland lakes are closed now, but the rivers are open in Minnesota. You got the Mississippi. Um, I think they're fishing in the Missouri River, Lake Huron. A lot of the tributaries that run out of the Great Lakes, the season is open. And now's when you go vertical jigging for big walleye. I want to give you some tips. One of the biggest tips is have a rod. You're going to feel the bite. What I want to do is I am going to be they call it vertical jigging for a reason. Your line is up and down here and I'm taking this jig and I'm just gently having it hit bottom to make sure that I'm near the bottom. I want to feel that tap of the bottom once in a while as my boat is drifting downriver in current. So I want to have a really uh, sensitive rod that's delivering me the information on what that jig is doing. A rod that's specifically made for that is the St. Croix Icon. It's a very affordable rod. I like a medium light action with an extra fast action tip. I like using braided line. This I have braided line on with a fluorocarbon leader. So some of the tricks are using the right weight of jig. So picture this boat floating down a river. I am floating, the, the current is pushing me away. And you want your line on the side of the boat that is, a, the, the, the current is pushing the boat away. Because if I get, you get snags when you're doing this. So if I got a snag and my boat was going this way downstream, that would put all sorts of torque on my line. My line would be caught under the boat it's much harder to clear a snag and you can get into trouble really quick. So I want that line going away from me. If I got hung up, I can kind of, one of the tricks is to, you know, you don't want to bend the rod, you don't want to high stick it. I give it a quick snap right away. If I can't get it back and I need to break that line, one of the tricks is, is to hold this spool still. Don't use your hand right here and hold it. That line will get tighter and tighter and then it'll break. So what I usually do is I keep a couple rods up here with, you know, you're gonna lose jigs when you're vertical jigging. So I have a second rod ready to go. So I want this line vertical. If I'm pulling this jig down the river and it's way there and that's not vertical, that's when it gets hung up. That's when you're not gonna feel the bite. We were just out yesterday. That line had to be vertical or you weren't gonna get any fish. So when I set my line down here, I'm gonna kinda of have it start under the boat. So I'm not, I'm not gonna start behind myself already. I'm gonna start the way the current's going and then the boat is pushing, or the current is pushing the boat. Next thing you know, I'm vertical and I can try to hold this. If I can't hold it, and I can't feel the bottom, I gotta go up to a heavier jig. So right here we have some jig sizes. This one is a 3 8 ounce. This one is, no, this one's a 5 8 This one's a 3 8 This one is a quarter. And this is the clam drop tungsten jig. That's also a quarter and see the difference. This is going to have less resistance in the water because it's smaller around, but it's just as heavy as this bigger one. I love these jigs. With that tungsten, you can feel every little thing that you're feeling on the bottom, and it doesn't poison eagles, and it's not as bad for the environment as lead is. So keep that in mind. I love those jigs. You want to use the kind of jig where you're able to keep your line vertical, if the current is fast, you might have to go up to a 5 8 If it's not as fast, go down. You want the smallest you can as long as you can stay as long as you can stay vertical. Have your second rod ready to go and uh, you can have, you know, some spare jigs tied up and just have to hook them onto a swivel or something. 
keep a smaller reel so it's lightweight so it's your hand doesn't get fatigued and if you haven't tried it get out there and try it vertical jigging for fish is so fun for the next two months that's going to be the bite to go after so good luck to you guys you know um i want to give you guys some extra information when we're doing some of these video videos and stuff and uh i can't uh tell you enough how fun vertical jigging is and um so i want to talk a little bit about boat control so if you picture us this whole boat floating down the river the current is pushing it so when my trolling motor's down i'm going to be watching my graph here my trolling motor's down and i just have to hit a little bit left right if all of a sudden the boat starts twisting too much i'm just going to adjust that setting so all three of us vertical jigging in the boat are have plenty of real estate we're all going at the same time you don't want anyone jigging off the other side of the boat because if they got hung up next thing you know someone's rods practically breaking it's bent in half it gets things all screwed up the line is under the boat keep your lines on the the current so if you get hung up you're going away from it and it's not going under the boat um you know having a good rod is really really important and i have a lot of stories where this is true where people fishing with me all of a sudden they try one of my rods and uh they're catching fish so braided line a good rod and with the discounts we get you know these aren't that expensive this is an entry level rod but it is really effective for this technique. Um, you know, you can anchor and cast Wolf River rigs. That's a very popular technique to do. What we talked about today was just a little, just vertical jigging. You want to use the smallest jig as you can. Let's show that rod. To uh, be able to touch bottom. But if you're not feeling the bottom, go up to that next size. This okay. jig that I have on this rod right now, these are one of my favorites. Um, they're flat on both sides. I don't know who makes them. Northland Tackle, I think. But they're really good for going through, through current. And one thing that is much more important that you realize is color. I was fishing a tournament one time and uh, it had those jigs had to be orange or you didn't get a bite. We were down to the digging the bottom of the barrel for our very last orange jig because you're going to lose jigs when you're vertical jigging it's just the reality of it so when you're starting out for the day everyone in your boat use a different color and you're going to come on to a pattern and then everyone can switch but you know when you're going out to the bait store before you're asking for fishing reports say what color what color is working because each day it can change so if you're, you know you're going over fish and you're never getting any bites, just switch colors. Even if you're on the right size, you might want to switch. Yesterday when we were fishing, it had to be this orange and green. You know, there's generally gold, orange, chartreuse. You know, those are the basics. Black is another one. Those are the colors that, you know, you only probably need to go through five color choices. And one of those five is going gonna, is gonna to work. Um, the other thing, a little secret here is, so when I'm going down the river, I'm watching my graph. And if all of a sudden I see a big brush pile or something, well, that's going to be a snag. So when I see that, I lift my, my jig up so it's not dragging through all that brush and everything. That saves you a lot of snags. And I tell the people in the back of the boat, I have my console graph on that same page so they can keep eyeball in that graph and you know kind of lifting their jig up to prevent getting hung up in the first place if you feel a little tick i can feel with this rod and braided line i can feel if my minnow fell off i can feel if i hit a stick that i can pick up right away to avoid the whole branch the whole tree i can feel if i'm hitting um, gravel i can feel if a, if a minnow's biting really short maybe if they're just biting the tail and i'm you know, a lot of times they're just biting half the minnow off. That's, then, that's when you add a stinger hook. You have that little extra hook when the fish are biting really short. So yesterday they were biting really light, but they were taking the whole minnow. And the bigger minnow you had, the more bites you got. So keeping all those little details of information that you're learning the day that you're on the water 
use those because it's a constant adaptation of small tweaks to find the most success. So feel free to message me if you have any question. If you have an opportunity to get out with someone to vertical jig, um, it is so fun. And ask Sandy Whiteman to tell you the story when we were vertical jigging for smallmouth bass on Lake Superior and how she learned a valuable lesson about the St. Croix Icon Rod. It's a good story.